Hey friends, welcome back to another budget friendly DIY video. Today we're going to be making a couple of DIY trays, something a little bit practical. Um, I kind of decided to do these because I needed these for an area in my house. I had a few ups and downs and had to kind of change my plans midway through. So I'm going to take you through the whole process, but in the end, we're going to be making two trays, one of which is a tiered tray, all on a really low budget. So let's get to it. So for our first tray, I'm going to be using a sign that I picked up from Hobby Lobby on clearance, but you could use anything like this that you could find at a thrift store, or like I said, just on clearance, or maybe an old sign that you have laying around. Um, these are fairly easy to come by in my experience. Um, and we're going to take off the staples and the hardware from the back. The back, as you can imagine, being a tray, the back is going to be the main part of the tray that you're going to be seeing and using. So we're going to clean that up, um, sand everything down just to smooth it out, and then we're going to take some lightweight speckling and fill in the holes and let that dry, and then we'll sand that down as well. We just want a smooth surface. Now I wanted to finish off the back side as well, so I, I don't think I took the best route, but I'm going to show you part of this, but I'm not going to make it long. I tried to move the pa remove the paper because it seemed like it was coming off pretty easily, but then it kind of stopped coming off easily. In the end, I kind of just ended up with a little bit of a mess. So my recommendation would be either to just paint it as is, or maybe cover it with some like a brown craft paper or something like, or even some like cardstock, something like that. But as you can see, I just, I was scoring it with a putty knife and then putting a damp paper towel on it. And I got a lot of it off this way, but in the end it just kind of ended up with a mess. So I'm just being real with you, sharing with you the process. It doesn't need to be this complicated. What I decided to do was smooth over some lightweight spackling across the back of it, and or what I guess was originally the front of it. And once that dried, I sanded it off and then I painted everything. And I honestly, I forgot to film that. Um, so I painted everything with a couple coats of Waverly chalk paint. I didn't do the inside as many coats. I think I just did one there because I knew I'd be covering it. So now that we have a smooth blank surface, I'm taking this cardstock. This came in a pack from Hobby Lobby, a large pack with multiple different shades of like wood looking paper. And it's a nice thicker cardstock. So I'm just measuring it out. We're going to cut it to size. Um, I wanted a nice snug fit because there is going to be a seam, but I didn't want the seam to be super noticeable. You could also use like contact paper or like the vinyl from the Dollar Tree. You could use that as well, or you could just paint it. But I wanted there to be just like some different textures and dimensions. So that's why I chose to use the paper. So like I said, I'm going to share with you all the things that I did. But then I realized that if there was any cracks around the edges, you'd be able to see the white popping through. So I went in with Waverly Chalk Feet in the color Elephant. And first I was just gonna paint where the seam would be and then around all the edges, but then I kind of got in a roll and just painted the whole thing. But this is about the same color as the paper. And so this way, if you know it doesn't exactly butt up to the edge of the tray, you're not going to notice it. And then while I had some of that paint on my brush, I decided to do a little bit of dry brushing and distressing around the tray just to give a little bit extra detail. I didn't want it to just be, here's the sign, we're gonna paint it, that's the, the end of it. So while that is all drying, we're gonna make some handles. So I was looking around my stash and what I found that I thought I could use were these wooden dowels. They come in a pack from the Dollar Tree and I'm using these dog nail clippers. I've seen people use these, they're from the Dollar Tree as well, and it just didn't work that great for me, but I, I mean, I made it work. I kind of just scored around it and twisted it as I went until it broke off, and then I just sanded each end down with a sanding block to smooth it out. So as you can see, I have the long top part and then these two little pieces that are going to hold the handle up. You could also use some hardware that maybe you pick up from... I don't know, a thrift store or that you have lying around or from an old piece of furniture that you've changed out. But this is just a way to make your own. This is not gonna be functional hardware, it's going to be decorative. So I am um, attaching it together with some super glue gel, which you can also find at Dollar Tree. And it doesn't take a long time to set, but you do need to hold it while it sets. Once it was all completely dry, I mixed in some black 
and gray paint to try to get, and I used some water, I tried to just kind of get like a darker stain. So I brushed it on and wiped it off, but it was a little too thick to really be like a stain. It was definitely more like a paint, but either way, it worked. So we have our handles all painted. Now we're going to glue down our paper. I'm just using some, uh, this Gorilla wood glue stick or Gorilla, Gorilla glue stick. I think I got this at like Marshall's. Um, but I'm sure you can buy it at craft stores. Um, and I use my, I can't remember what that little roller tool is. It is from Plaid. Um, and it's great for Mod Podging. So I just use it to smooth it out. And then I did put a coat of Mod Podge on top. You don't really need to do this, but I thought in case anything spilled on it or if I was, um, I don't know, make it easier to clean, wipe down. I don't know. And then I just went all along the edges too to help seal down those corners and edges. Once everything is dry, I'm just measuring out where I want the handles and we're going to attach them with some super glue gel as well. And that is gonna be it. I will show you at the end how I'm using this and what it all will looks like. All right, so this next one, I'm redoing one that I already had. So I'm just showing you, I, these are two pie plates. These are from the Dollar Tree. And then I had used a vase for the center, which I ended up having to switch out because I actually broke this <laughs> in the process. So I had to buy a new one. Um, so because I had already painted these pie plates, I thought maybe I needed to co coat them with some Mod Podge so that the paint would work better. I had issues painting this. My paint kept cracking and it just didn't look good. I think it's just simply though because Either my paint is old, which is kind of happening. My uh, Waverly chalk paint here is getting really thick um, and I need to water it down. That or just the fact that this had previously been painted. So I don't normally have this problem with painting, but here you can see, I, I spared you a lot, of, a lot of the work that I did, but you can see how it's just cracking there. And no matter what I did, it kept doing that. So I decided to, I wasn't gonna give up. I just sanded them down and thinned out, I use a different paint. I'm using silver lining from Waverly Chalk Paint and still thinned it out with a damp paintbrush. And this did not crack nearly as much. I would say if you go with fresh pie plates or fresh trays, tins, you should be fine. Um, you could also spray paint them. But um, I was trying to just reuse because this one had just kind of fallen apart on me. So anyways, I went over it with a silver lining, did a couple coats, and it didn't crack nearly as much, and it's really not noticeable, so I went with it, but just trying to be real with you and show you my whole process. So here is a vase I picked up at a thrift store. I paid 25 cents or 50 cents for it, and I just cleaned it with some rubbing alcohol, and then we are going to paint the whole thing with Mod Podge so that the paint will stick better to the glass. I just looked for a vase that had not too wide at the top or bottom because I didn't want that to take up too much surface on my tray. Um, and I liked that this one had some texture to it, but you could certainly pick one up at the Dollar Tree as well, but those are $1.25, so I was going for something cheaper. And now I'm gonna paint that in a Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Elephant. I did avoid painting the bottom just so the glue would adhere better, even though I had already painted some of the trays themselves, but it is something to think about. Um, paint can sometimes interfere with glue sticking. And once that was fully dry, I was like, okay, I wanna add some texture here. So I took Waverly's wax in, I have the clear one, so I tinted it with some white acrylic paint, and I just kind of brushed it on and wiped it off and mine ended up being a little bit more, um, uh, what's, that, what's the word I'm looking for? Saturated in color, um, but it still worked. I just, like I said, painted it on, wiped it off, and I just kind of kept going until I liked how it looked. First, I wiped off a little too much of it, and I went back and added it into each of those grooves. I really just wanted that to kind of stand out. You could paint these whatever color and textures you wanted. You could use the paint and baking soda technique, but I just really wanted to embrace the texture of this vase. So that's what I chose to do. The wax will also act as a sealant on the paint as well. So you can see the coat with the gray paint definitely looked a lot better. So once everything is dry, we just want to attach it 
and I am using some more of that super glue gel. I did use a really good amount of it, but I didn't want it to ooze out and be super obvious either. As you can see on the bottom of that tray, I hadn't painted at the center. Um, real quick, I was just checking to see if it was at least somewhat centered. And then I did go around the edge and just put in a little bit more super glue gel. Um, I, like I said, I didn't want it to go too heavy and have it be oozing out. This will definitely work better than the hot glue. I used hot glue the first time I made one of these. And it actually worked for a couple of years, but it did ultimately fall apart. I also would recommend, and I meant to do it and was so mad that I forgot, um, putting some rocks or something in the vase just to help weight it down. It is fine without it, but I think it would um, wobble a little bit. It doesn't wobble a lot, just kind of walking around in the room. It wobbles. So that's something to think about if you have some like little rocks, um, like floral rocks and stuff on hand to put those in the vase first. So I would recommend that. And now we're going to look at how they came out. Here is the rectangular tray. I thought the handles looked really cute on it. And um, I just loved how the dry brushing kind of matched in with the paper. And the seam is not super noticeable there, at least to me, especially once you've got stuff on it. And here is our little tear tray as well. And then I'm going to share with you how I, what I did with this. I made these to corral stuff on our dresser in our bedroom, mainly for my husband's stuff. He has quite a few pairs of glasses and then just a spot for like deodorant and cologne, change and watch bands and all of that. Um, so anyways, that's it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.